EHV1, or equine herpes virus 1, is a part of a family of herpes viruses that can affect horses, causing symptoms of fever, respiratory signs such as coughing, discharge of the nose or eyes, and it can also cause abortions in pregnant mares. There's also a neurologic form of the disease, causing horses to become uncoordinated, weak, or wobbly. Horses may have trouble standing up, or problems urinating, causing a dribbling of urine. This is a very serious virus, and while it is possible for horses to fully recover from the disease, this is unfortunately not always the case. It is also important to know that EHV1 is a very common virus in horses. It is a latent virus, meaning that once infected, horses carry the herpes virus for life and may or may not exhibit clinical symptoms. As horse owners, it is imperative that we know how to manage our animals so as to diminish the impact of EHV1. Howdy, my name is Jennifer Zoller, Horse Program Specialist with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, and I'm here today with Dr. Navis of the College of Veterinary Medicine, and he has some expertise in equine infectious disease. We've been hearing a lot about equine infectious disease in the media today, and so Dr. Navis has graciously agreed to uh, answer some questions for us today about what it is, why we should be aware of it, and things of that nature. So first, thank you, Dr. Navis, You're for welcome. speaking with us today. Um, how can I prevent my horse from contracting EHV? The main thing is try to avoid that your horse gets in contact with horses that, um, that have a EHV. The virus is, is transmitted by the droplets in the, in the cough or in the snorting of horses with, with, EHV, with EHV1 and also can be transmitted indirectly by, um, by brushes or by any supplies that get in, in contact with, uh, with these horses. So, so yeah, also avoid avoid contact with those. And what are the different risk factors for different classes of horses, say pasture horses versus horses that are going to shows or rodeos every weekend? Yeah, so all horses are gonna be susceptible to potentially de develop the disease. Horses that travel maybe maybe more susceptible for for two reasons. One, they are gonna be in contact with more horses, and second, the the fact of of traveling. And especially if it's a long trip, can someone affect their their um, their immune system? And what should I do if I believe my horse has contracted the virus? Probably the first thing would be to contact your your veterinarian. Equine herpes virus. It's it's a reportable disease. And the two other things that that you want to do is isolate your horse or separate your horse from the rest of the horses that you have in the farm or or the or the property and second uh, start checking the the temperature of your horse usually the first sign of disease it's a it's a it's a fever at, and if temperature is not uh, is not checked it, it can be missed and if your if your horse develops any signs of disease including a temperature over 1015 or it starts coughing or has a nasal discharge or has any other of the neurologic signs that we um, talk about and call your your veterinarian again. Okay. And are there any vaccinations that I should be aware of that I should be using on my horses to protect against EHV? There are vaccinations against EHV, but the current vaccinations are not marketed or do not protect against the, the neurologic disease. So these vac these vaccines are useful to protect against abortions and they are probably useful too to decrease the shedding of, of the virus so in some circumstances uh, this may be useful too. It's not considered a core vaccination so it's a risk-based vaccination so mm -hmm. it may depend on the circumstances in your farm and you with your veterinarian can decide if your horses should or should not be vaccinated. Good. Well thank you Dr. Navis for speaking with us today. You're welcome. Hey, hi nice to be here today. We have uh, several tests at the diagnostic lab that we run for the herpes viruses either EHV4 and EHV1 and I want to reinforce what Dr. Navis said that we we don't recommend owners going out and just testing clinically normal horses because a lot of them carry these viruses and, and it can cause a lot of confusion on how to deal with those horses. Good. Thank, you. thank you very much. In summary, EHV1 is a very common latent virus in horses, and it is a reportable disease. Animals that are hauled often are at a greater risk due to more frequent contact with other horses, 
and the stress associated with hauling can affect the immune system. Vaccination can help to protect your horse from the respiratory and abortive symptoms of the disease. However, the vaccines are not marketed to protect against the neurologic form, and vaccinations must be frequent to be effective. Contact your veterinarian to determine if vaccination would be beneficial for your program. Secondly, be vigilant in watching for symptoms such as fever, nasal discharge, lethargy, so that the animal may be quarantined and treated early. Animals should be quarantined until they are no longer shedding the virus, meaning that they are no longer contagious. And lastly, use preventative biosecurity practices, such as disinfecting water buckets and brushes, and limiting horse-to-horse -horse contact while traveling. For a more complete list of preventative biosecurity measures, see the extension publication, Best Management Practices for Equine Disease Prevention, at the link below. Again, if you have any questions about equine herpes virus, be sure to contact your local veterinarian.